Hello, I'm Matt from Practical BI and welcome to part 4 in our Power BI Basics tutorial for beginners. This time we're looking at how to add columns to our data um, and we'll be looking at using DAX which is the Power BI language um, that we'll use in the front end to do that um, and we'll also look at, at how to create measures as well, we'll talk a bit about those. So let's dive straight in. Okay, so I'm in my report, um, it's as we left it last time. Still a bit of tidying up to do here, but we'll, we'll come to that in a later tutorial. Let's start by looking at how we can add, uh, add data or enhance our data set with an additional column. So I'm just going to go over to my data set on the right hand side here um, and as always with Power BI we've got a few ways of doing the same thing so uh, I'm just going to first of all just click on a column uh, within my data set just to make sure that I'm, I'm within the right table only one here but, uh, but good practice to do that um, and then I'm going to click new column at the top here under column tools on the ribbon I'll just wait for, for Power BI to work on that and then what you'll see is we've got the formula bar at the top and we have the option to name our column and then uh, to add a, uh, a formula or some uh, functions to, to give us the result of what we want in the column. So let's say here we've got a, a sale price and a manufacturing price. Let's say we want a, a profit column. Um, so we'll just call this profit and um, we'll say equals. Um, and then I'm just going to use a simple formula. I'm just going to take one from the other. So let's just say profit is our sale price. Take away our manufacturing price. And what you notice is as I start to type these columns, um, Power BI is automatically suggesting um, both uh, functions. You can see as I start to type there, we've got uh, max suggested and, and, and other functions, um, but also uh, we have the columns that are in our data. So as I type man, um, all that's available there is, is manufacturing, and I can just press the tab key to auto populate that. So I've got sale price minus manufacturing price, um, gives me my profit. So I can just press enter there. Um, and so there you go on the right hand side here our profit column has appeared so let's see what that looks like um, if I just um, move my slicer out of the way here let's move this bar chart out of the way as well and just to demonstrate I'm just going to add in a, a simple table um, and we'll just uh, we'll bring in um, profit as the value in our table you can see that straight away Power BI is recognizing that we've, we've got a number again so um, we've got a, a default aggregation of sum here um, if I click don't summarize there then I can also bring in the sale price and uh, and also let's bring in the manufacturing price so you can see how that calculation is working Ooh, bring in manufacturing price there as well and so you can see for example where we've, we've got a sale price of 20 here manufacturing price of 260 that gives us a profit of negative uh, 240 um, and sale price of 12 Manufacturing price of five gives us a profit of seven. So that seems to be working well. Let's look at adding another column now. Um, so the the, 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 um, the language that we're using here when we um, when we create these columns is called DAX. DAX stands for Data Analysis Expressions. And it's used in Power BI to create uh, new columns like this in, in, the, in the front end of Power BI, um, but also to create measures, which we'll, we'll come on to look at a bit later. So let's um, try using a bit more DAX now. So I'm just going to click new column again, or actually let's go to our, our table here. I can right click on the table and another way of adding a, a new column is just to right click there and to go to new column. Um, you see that, that again will create the new column in my table. So let's create a column that just tells us whether our product is profitable or not. So I'm going to say profitable, we'll just call our our column profitable and I'm going to use an if statement so if you're familiar with the way that if statements work in Excel you'll you'll see that it's exactly the same within DAX so I can just say if um, and let's use our new profit column so if profit is greater than zero then profitable else not profitable so much like in Excel I'm separating each um, part of my, my function here with a comma and what you notice is both when I click in here and also when I start typing the the, 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 um, the function if originally um, we get this this pop-up that tells us how to um, structure the function that we're using so it says I start by typing if and then I have to put in my logical test and, and what that means is just a, a test that will give a, a true or a false answer so for example I can say um, profit is greater than zero and either that is true or it is false 
um, and then I say what do I want to return if that's true and what do I want to return if that's false um, so I've said I've said we'll return profitable if that statement's true and not profitable if it's false and we, we you should notice that we've got these square brackets around result is false uh, sorry result if false and what that means is that this option of the function is uh, is optional so this this part of the function we could leave out completely if we wanted to um, and power bi would just default to to false uh, in, in that case default to a value of false that is um, so whenever you're typing a, a function out and whenever you're typing dax out it's it's, it's worth um, pausing as you type just to check um, what the function requires and what parameters the function requires because um, it could be um, quite powerful even some of the optional um, bits that you can add in the function there could 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 be quite powerful for you so um, this time I'm just going to click on the, the, the tick there to commit exactly the same as pressing enter on the keyboard and once that's um, evaluated you'll see we've got this profitable column here so um, let's replace the, uh, the the pie chart here instead of um, using product I'm going to click the X next to product and I'm going to bring my profitable column on there instead okay so I've got the proportion of my uh, um, sales that are profitable and my or sorry the proportion of my units sold that are profitable and the proportion of my units sold that are not profitable so it might be a good thing just to um, to add some colors in there um, so I could for example say um, uh, well I might for example want to use a green to, to say that my um, product is profitable um, and I might want to use a red to say that it's not profitable and that highlights quite nicely the difference between the two okay so we've created an extra column there now let's have a look at trying to create a measure so um, although we haven't created them uh, Power BI has, has automatically applied a measure for some of our um, uh, visuals here. So for example, where we've got units sold, we are actually measuring and effectively creating a measure here for the sum of units sold. So a measure in Power BI, um, different to a column, a measure doesn't actually contain any data. It's simply a calculation to apply to your data, um, to aggregate it in, in some way. So that could be, um, as, as we've got here, that could be a sum, it could be taking the average, a minimum, a maximum, and um, there's a whole variety of, of, of functions, again, using DAX, um, that we can apply to, to create measures. So let's uh, let's test that out. I'm just going to click in my uh, data table again. Um, I'm going to go at the top to table tools this time, and you'll see we've got uh, two options here. We've got new measure and quick measure. Um, so first of all let's have a look at quick measure here this is a good way when you're just getting started with Power BI of um, understanding how different measures are structured and uh, and how you can create them yourself so I'm going to drop down here and let's say we just wanted to take a uh, an average unit sold so I can um, I can go down to my average per category I'll click on that that's the kind of um, uh, function that I want to use um, and I can just drag on my unit sold here um, and let's have a look at um, the category being uh, the country, for example. So I'm calculating my average uh, units sold um, by country. Um, and I click OK to that. And you can see that I've got a, a new uh, new field appeared in my in my data set here this time we've got a, a calculator icon next to the um, next to the field to, to indicate that it's a measure so if I click on that you'll see we've got a, a function here so I can click on the arrow here to expand the window and we're using um, an average X function um, uh, to calculate the, uh, the the average in in that way per category so just note that so we've got a, a calculator icon here that indicates a measure and we've got um, two different um, uh, column icons here to indicate the the two custom columns that we've created so you can quite easily spot in your data set which columns have been created in the, in the front end or, or which fields and um, and measures have been created in the front end um, just by just by looking at the icons there so let's delete that um, per category I don't want to go into the complexity of that at this level um, for now I just want to indicate that you can use that tool to help you create these these measures if you need to um, but instead we're going to create a simpler average um, so I'm just going to uh, again use a different method this time I'm going to right click on my data and I'm going to go to um, new measure 
um, and let's let's calculate a few measures. So first of all, let's let's look at the um, uh, let's look at a, a sum of the sales. So if I just call this my sum of sales, um, and I'm going to use the sum function. So I'm just going to type sum, and again you can see I've got my um, my tip here that tells me that I just need to put in the column name into those brackets. So I'll do open brackets. But my column name is just units sold, and then I'll close brackets there and hit enter. We'll see our measure appearing on the right here. And I just want to demonstrate um, when this is loaded that that uh, creating a measure in this way is exactly the same as the, the measure that Power BI has, has automatically created for us here. So um, I've got my pie chart selected on the left hand side and we've got units sold. Instead of units sold or as well as for now, let's just drag in sum of sales and I'll remove my um, units sold. And you can see that uh, it's, it's working in exactly the same way. So um, I could I could do side by side. So let's copy and paste that that um, pie chart there, and we'll look at one using the unit sold column uh, and Power BI's um, aggregation, and another with a measure. Now there are a few differences um, in 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 the functionality when you use a measure versus when when you just use um, Power BI's aggregation by by dragging in there. Um, so on the right hand side, so this one where where I've um, uh, I haven't used the measure. I can right click on a segment here and I can go um, uh, I could I could go to uh, uh, show data point as table and what you'll see is that lets me drill into that data uh, and I can see everything about all of those profitable sales. I can see the units sold, the countries that they were in um, and uh, my, my other columns there as well. Now if I go back to report um, if I try and do the same thing by right clicking um, here, you can see I don't have my show data pointers table. I have show as show as a table, um, similarly to the to the my my other uh, Power BI created um, or a default measure. I've got show as table there, but I don't have my show data pointers table. So that's one of the limitations of of using a measure versus um, using Power BI's um, uh, um, built built in aggregation there. Um, so uh, one one other one one benefit to using a measure though is that I can um, I can make them a bit more complex. So for example, I could say um, I'm not sure why I'd want to do this, but let's say uh, I, I I want to I want to say if my uh, um, sum of sales is um, greater than uh, ten, then fab else. Um, boo. And I can press enter there, and you can I can keep applying different levels of of, of functions there. You can see that that no longer where it works on my, my pie chart, but I could, for example, uh, bring in my table here. I could add some of sales, um, and I could um, I can see there which where I've got my my sales some of sales coming up as fab because it is over over ten. And so um, that's that's measures and columns, um, both using DAX. In other tutorials, we'll go into a, a bit more detail around DAX and look at some of the more complicated functions there and some of the more powerful functions. Um, but for now, if you've uh, if you found this tutorial useful, please do like and subscribe. Um, and if you have any feedback or questions or suggestions for future videos, please do add them to the comments. And I look forward to speaking to you again.